Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial. And on this one, we need to talk about the ramp. Almost forgot the uh, the ramp. So yeah, this is what we're gonna do. So this is how, you know, the uh, synth I have right here. I'm just playing an E chord, just like this. All right, we have a nice uh, little bit of reverb and a little bit of, a little bit of delay. Uh, but that's it, that's, that's the sound. So I'm gonna go and bring the ramp. And this is a very simple uh, modulator. But we can uh, we can go crazy on this one. So I'm going to show you in a minute how this can sound. So as soon as you uh, you select it, you know you get the per voice and the not per voice. I'm going to disable the per voice and I'm just going to get this one. So you should do the same. So this means that every time that this is recognizing a new note, it's going to create a ramp. It's just an envelope, just a ramp. So again, if I go right here, we're going to say every time that we are recognizing that E chord, we're going to ramp from 0 to 100%. So 0 to 100%. Now, of course, you have ways of controlling this ramp. You can you have the milliseconds, which is the time. And if you go into uh, lower settings, the ramp is just going to be much faster. You know, it's going to take much, uh, you know, a lot less time to get from here to 100%. That's pretty much. And if you go very slow, it's just going to take a long time. Now, if you if the ramp is too slow and you're playing the chords just like this, whenever a new note comes in, it's going to reset the ramp. It's going to start over. So if this is too long, you're just not going to get anything, right? You can even go to, you can go up to 10 seconds, which is crazy. Maybe in this case is going to be like 900 900 milliseconds, just something normal from 0 to 100%. So you have another way, which is uh, going to be uh, the kind of a beat mode. If you go uh, to lower settings, this is going to be much faster. Or much, you know, shorter in this case. Or, you know, much slower. Pretty simple. So, of course, another you can do all the things. This one is going to control the uh, whole amount of how much you want to do. In this case, we are doing 0 to 100%. If I go down, it's going to do less. It's just like a mix control or mount control. All right. So now we are going from 0 to 100%. What happens if you want to go backwards? We want to go from 100 to 0. So this is going to be this arrow. And this, what it does, is going to invert the instruction. Notice the, the, the shape. It just looks different. And it's because it's inverting this. And since we are doing, doing it backwards, it's just starting on 100% and then goes down to 0. And now it's just a different instruction, a different ramp. So, you have all the ways, I'm gonna go and do this one, you know, go back to the uh, normal one, and you can drag right here this one, and you can change the curve to linear to not linear. <laughs> so, of course, this will change how this behaves. It's gonna take a little bit more time when it starts, and then it's gonna you know, go faster when it reaches 100%, when it's closer to 100%. And the other one, the exponential, is gonna be a little bit different. All of these are just different ways of, you know, doing this ramp. Now, of course, you cannot argue that this is pretty uh, dull. We could do this with automation if you want, if you wanted to. But, you know, it's just a nice way of getting the same result, a much more controlled, you know, kind of a ramp with this one. Now, of course, you can go crazy and you can get really interesting sounds just by using the ramp. So, okay, so this is a sustain chord. We are sustaining the same chord for four different bars. Pretty simple. So this means that every time that we get a note, the ramp will start, but, you know, it, it does nothing. It's going to go from 0 to 100% and then stay there. Now, then you get the loop. And this one, what it will do is we'll just loop. And now the timing right here is very important because if you go faster, it's just going to go and do a faster motion. And now the beats mode again really, really, is really important because you can control the loop a little bit better now. And again, you can go crazy right here. I'm going to go and do a little bit of unison, a little bit of sync, a little bit of noise. I don't know. I'm just, you know, doing whatever. So now, what happens if I bring all the modulators? I'm going to go and bring a beat LFO just to bring something. And I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Now I'm going to go and do exponential and non-exponential. And I'm going to go and bring another LFO that is doing something else. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to do something like that. 
And there we go. Just crazy sounds. This is not something, you know, you, you can do with automation. You just you need know, to do a little bit of experimentation. We are doing this just with the ramp. You no? Know? Alright. Okay, so I'm gonna go right now and go right here. And you know what? I'm gonna delete this one and start over. I'm gonna bring the ramp again. And uh, I'm gonna go over there and select the ramp. Cool. Now, I'm going to show you what happens with the per voice. Maybe you already know because this is kind of a how it works on Bitwick, but maybe you don't know. So, I'm going to go and show you. So, right now, we were using the uh, not per voice, right? The kind of a, the normal one. And this means every time that we get a new note, we get a ramp. We know this. And this is the MIDI I'm using. We are just uh, doing a chord, sustaining it, and then we introduce the same chord, but one uh, octave up, but we are sustaining the previous notes. But it doesn't matter. As soon as we get new notes, even though we are sustaining the other ones, we get the ramp. Alright, so pretty simple, we know this. So now, what, ha what happens if we do uh, the per voice? So this is going to be a different instruction, and notice that we get a different, uh, kind of a visual representation of this. We are doing on threes, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And this is giving you one, two, three, and then gives you the new ones, the new ones, and the new ones. And this means that every single key that you're introducing right here, since it's per voice, is going to get one voice. So now the uh, movement right here is going to be a little bit different. And we can actually hear this. I'm going to go and do a little bit of filter, right? Okay. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to do some playing. And we hear the low. And then you, we hear the transition of the filter. So we can hear it, you know, going from 0 to 100%. Now, I want you to listen that whenever we get, get this keys right here, uh, we hear the transition from 0 to 100%. But then we get the other ones. So we are going to hear this one, uh, this one's kind of a coming in with the filter. But this one will not get, you know, that sweeping motion. It's because it's using a different voice. And we have a different instruction for that voice. This is why we have a per voice. Each voice is going to get its own kind of a filter. So I'm going to go and play it. Remember that every time we, we get new, new, new voices or new, you know, new, uh, new chord is going to keep bringing in the background, background and it's not going to get that sweep with the filter. Only the new voices are going to get the, the filter. Okay, I'm going to go and play it again. So this is very different if we do a, a, a no, no voice. It's going to do and do the sweep because all the voices, all the keys are using the same filter, which is one filter. You hear the sweep. Sweep. All the keys have sweep. And we always hear the sweep for every single note that we get, which is, you know, a little bit different than the per voice. So this is how it works on Bitwig. But again, maybe you didn't know. And you need to bear in mind that it's a little bit different. Maybe you don't like this per voice. You want, uh, you know, to run the same filter on all the keys. So you're going to need to go and disable. Okay, so then we have another option, which is going to be the single trigger. And this one works with the non per voice. So uh, what it will do, uh, this one, it's going to be a single trigger. As soon as we play the MIDI note, of course, if we are sustaining, it's just going to go and trigger it one single time. If you're introducing new keys and we're still holding, it's not going to do anything. So let me just let me just do it again. I'm going to go and reset it. I'm going to go play. We get the ramp. We don't get it. Notice that when the loop starts, we are getting uh, new MIDI notes. We, we are not sustaining. It just starts over. So in that case, we are going to get a ramp. So this means that if we are doing something like this, that we are just playing uh, MIDI and then releasing and then playing it again, it will always do the ramp, right? This uh, it's useful when you're doing when you're sustaining chords, and you're then you introduce new chords without releasing the previous one. So this is kind of a, a legato. Let's say. So that's it. All right. So that that was the ramp. So hopefully you learned something. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and of course remember to check uh, Patreon. I upload everything to Patreon way before I do it right here on YouTube because on YouTube I can do one video a day. So check Patreon if you can. All right. So see you on the next one.